Welcome back, everyone, to the Overwatch Euro Cup fundraiser. I am 3 007 and I'm joined by Sir Waltham. <laughs> 3 you are so much more high energy than me right now, and I like it. Gotta keep that up, especially for this next game we got going on. We got Portugal versus Kuwait coming on to the field, right? the, the virtual field, whatever you want to call that. But they're going to be coming into the game. Here we are just waiting a little bit uh, to get set up. So in the meantime... I asked you this before, Threep. How do you feel? We're going into Oasis, and this is a bit of a doozy. So depending on what round of Oasis we end up on first, it's, I think it's going to determine what we're going to see out of these teams first. Obviously, there is a particular uh, realm of Oasis where you can get some pretty solid Fara action, but the rest of it I think is going to be pretty complementary to this barriers-focused patch. Yeah, Absolutely. Uh, very curious to see what kind of gets rolled around in here. Um, I honestly, I know we've been seeing a lot of barriers, but I would not be too surprised to see a Hammond, particularly on that gardens map or um, certainly not university. I don't, I don't think that university is necessarily going to be conducive to that. Uh, right. I, I definitely expect to see some heavy tank play on, I mean, some, uh, some heavy barrier play rather on university. Yeah, University, I think, is just... It used to be the one map out of anything that got to see Reinhardt play, you know, when Reinhardt was, as always, still kind of relegated to the, the benches, so to speak. In this particular patch, uh, I don't know. It's it's definitely going to be some Sigma, but do you bring the Reinhardt, or do you actually just stick it out with the Orisa, which is being so well utilized by teams these days? Well, one thing to consider if you're talking about University on Oasis, you definitely got to consider that giant pit in the middle. Reinhardt, yeah. a lot more likely to get knocked into that pit. And even if it doesn't kill you, you're still being taken out of the fight for five seconds at best. So I think that that's something you're definitely going to want to avoid. I think the Orisa might be the smarter call here. But it's really going to come down to what the teams feel like. So I think we're about to get right on into it. Portugal going to be on the left Kuwait going to be on the right. We're going to be diving right into it here in just a moment. Yeah, so here we go. Uh, again, the Jabate timer has begun for Threepwood and Sir Waltham. So whilst we could uh, pontificate eloquently about the potential <laughs> of the compositions, instead we're just simply going to jam as many syllables as possible into sense. And meanwhile, we are going to say drop us a follow, uh, a subscribe if you're feeling super plucky. And uh, also, don't forget, Zandy's going to be dropping some sick links in the Twitch chat for a lot of merch. Also, we have a bunch of other casts going on right now. There's also Caster's Nests and also going to be in your preferred language, possibly. Don't forget to check the Twitch feed, Monkey Bubble Official Overwatch. And oh my goodness, Waltham, is that Doth My Eyes Deceive Me, Afara? It's not just one, but two Faras. You get two Faras for the price of one here. Three, going to be looking forward to that very much so. As well, Hanzo, Kuwait Diablo, going to be playing on that Hanzo, at least out of the gates, it's seeming. Uh, we've been seeing a lot of him lately, um, particularly in our last match. We saw a little bit of the Hanzo as well in the Romania versus Latvia. Yes, they used the Hanzo quite effectively. Now let's see how these teams hits Godara and Fangta in the sky with the Farmer Seas accompanying them. Mia and Warp gonna be dragging on that good damage boosting action. And this is kind of a poke phase. We're seeing a lot of that these days, not a lot of that these days, but with the barriers as they are and no Doomfist, gonna be difficult to bust it in a bit. Oh, there it is, blown wide open. Yeah, and that's exactly what you want, but you do not want to let those reses go through. And the Orisa getting knocked in, that's exactly what I was talking about earlier. Yeah, that's crazy. Arisa goes into the puddle, uh, the hole, so to speak. And that's better than a kill because it lets you murder the rest of the team. And yeah, that's going to be uh, pretty quickly Kuwait taking the first point in Oasis. Yeah, Kuwait's going to be feeling pretty good about that. Now, the hard part about running the Farah in these composition styles is that you do have the multi angles from the Sigma that can be operated with that shield. So you kind of have to be smart about how you're playing with those rockets. But as we can see, Funk, they're going to be having a lot more ult charge on the board, almost having those rockets ready up for this next fight. Yeah, so it's also going to be anti-nades versus uh, a lonely coalescence going out onto the field, but the anti-nades are still so huge. It's just crazy, and Funk drops their barrage Ooh, quite wow. early into the fight, but it's not really going to be doing a lot for them. Yeah, we'll get them a few early kills. That is going to be crucial as you want that to kind of 
get the early advantage into a fight and let those ults recharge. Funkta already about 30% to the next one, but we're also seeing a few more ults build up now for Kuwa 8. We're going to be seeing those Hanzo dragons up shortly. Just needs to land a few more arrows as well. The gravity flux going to be coming through from the Sigma as well, and not a lot to answer from the side of Portugal. Yeah, did I say the barrage wasn't doing a lot? I meant to say it was doing way too dang much. So the... Ooh, it looks like Mercy, so Lorp is gonna have the Valkyrie ready for the fight. Kuwait 7 main is also... Whoa! <laughs> going crazy! Yeah, that is the first double kill with a boulder I've seen in the short time that Sigma has been around. And they're gonna push up on that. They're gonna get very aggressive and... It's going to be Mia trying to get away, not quite able to with that Guardian Angel. And that's another problem. Yeah, that's it's not looking good for Portugal at the moment. They don't have a lot of ults coming online. Depending on how long this fight lasts, they could be able to bring a lot to bear, but they're looking at quite a bit on the other side of the field. Yeah, that's very true. It's going to be Kuwait 7 main, going to be having that grab flux to keep everybody locked down in the same position, if not just in the air, um, as well as deal some beefy damage. They're going to have to keep eyes out for that. Yeah, press F to pay respects, though, because Fangta is down. Barrage isn't going to happen, but unfortunately for Portugal, looks like no one was able to get to the point in time, and that's going to be the first round of Oasis going to Kuwait. Yeah, Kuwait going to be performing pretty solidly, not letting Portugal get too much presence on point at all after that first fight. And, man, there was so much going on there. The tank play coming through looks really strong for Kuwait. Um, I mean, we saw the, the double rock kill coming through from... Uh, seven main and that was just a fantastic play by my standards okay yeah that was nuts i the rock is able to do a lot of damage so i i get the, the uh, and also we also were seeing some sigma knocking some fars out of the sky there was a point at one point where Gadara was stunned then slept but it's clear that Kuwait Sigma is doing quite the good job with using that. But now they're going to be Kuwait's going to be coming out with a no barriers glory comp. Yeah, and it's rather peculiar. I mean, to an aspect, you're working with what you got. You're using the mobility from Kuwait to try to navigate around all those shields since they do have cooldown timers. It's just going to be very tough as J34 in a very bad spot early on. Yeah, McCree is going to open that up right there nicely. Pona finding the kill onto Widowmaker. Diablo goes down. And the kills are only coming in now for Portugal, who looks like they may have found some life. And then a big anti-nade is not going to stop them. They're actually just going to kill Radiance for the sheer audacity on it. Yeah, that's not a spot you want to be in. And now it's looking like Portugal kind of taking a little bit more command of the skies, not letting those fars have that free reign that they were getting before. And it's really working for them. We see them get the point. They're going to start building up some ult progress. And this time it's going to be Portugal with the first ults on the board. Yeah, that's fantastic. So Portugal, now they're here on the map. They're starting their climb to percentage. And oh, the kills are starting to come in very nicely. I don't even know if you call that a stagger, but the fight's already over if you're going to lose your Ana. Yeah, and, but they will be able to get the res and not quite able to prevent that given the geometry of the map. But the dead eye is going to be crucial, perhaps, in trying to force out some awkward positioning at worst. <laughs> but it's not even going to matter if they die early. Yeah. Uh, speaking of Sigma's doing fantastic work, Diablo's going to find Gadara, Gadara rather. But ATF is doing some serious work, and as we've noticed, the res is clutch, and the ticker keeps ticking. Yeah, it certainly does. This is only beneficial for Portugal. They're going to keep getting that progress. They don't even need to stay on point. Looks like they're opting to, however. They're going to be playing not at the main entrance to the point, and that might be the go signal for Kuwait. Yeah, that's going to be the big opener that they needed. Rez is definitely down, so now it's up to Diablo to get some more kills here. Valkyrie has been popped. They're going into the back line. The anti nade is there, and 7 main does get demeked, and the capture is going in. No one's on the point from Portugal to contest, and despite the number of kills, a back cap has been affected. Did ATF, I think ATF either killed themselves with the accretion or got hit by a car or something, but a big <laughs> rocket barrage coming through from Fonkta going to be crucial in helping to secure that win. Pona not able to use the high noon to really mitigate that damage coming through. And now the ults are starting to stack on the side of Kuwait. They're going to have no four online. Well, sight. make it three now that the infrasites have been popped, but still going to be making them work for them. Yeah, it's definitely still, even if 
Portugal comes in with the fast take. It's going to be two fight territory. And Fanta taking out Pona is going to make that just a little more difficult. Diablo finds Gadara. That's exactly the kind of kill you want to see out of your Widowmaker. So Diablo setting up on the high ground there. You're going to be getting some hot tastes onto the tanks here now as the line is quasi broken. But actually, the same thing just happened. Portugal takes it back. With not really. I mean, they got the kills, but sheesh. Yeah, and that's that's okay. You might you might lose the long fight, but it doesn't even look like that's gonna happen. As long as you prevent that point progress from ticking up for Kuwait, you're gonna feel pretty good about that. But now that you're able to hold point, you're gonna be feeling even better. Q8 Diablo gonna be dropped, and it is only looking more and more favorable for Portugal. Yeah, Portugal has the battle in the sky pretty much locked up. The Fangta bar uh, Barrage is very far away. Meanwhile, Gadara has everything they need to make this fight a single win. So yeah, Portugal's going to have to, uh, or rather, Kuwait's going to have to make a touch at some point in time. They do get it, and the bar Nano has on to the Farah. So that looks like it's going to be some tasty Barrage action. Uh, it's questionable. Gadara oh. solo going to be dropped by the Mercy, actually. That's a little bit of a turn turn of events but right now it is just portugal trying to fight to survive to, to get that final point cap they don't want to let kuwait flip it and here comes pono with the high noon is it gonna happen the answer is yes it finds a dmac diva grabs the mercy picks up the kill on Dafara to boot it looks like it might just be cleanup time but diablo rocking the tracer i love that yeah, a very quick comp coming out from the side of Kuwait. They're going to be looking to just get onto the point as much as possible. It's going to be rough, though, because they're running a tracer into a McCree. <laughs> Kadara getting the seal on the point with just a big punch on the Diablo. I'm surprised it took that long for a Doomfist to show up, but it looks like the hero does not arrive, a wizard rather, arrives exactly when they are supposed to. And we're going to be going into Oasis map, th or rather round three. So here it is. This is another pretty far eccentric mag. It looks like Gadara and Funk are going to be lining it up, but Diablo might be having some hero questions. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little bit curious here. Portugal, at least right now, lining up with the Hammond and the Orisa, the Wrecking Ball and the Orisa, rather. And you don't usually see those tanks go too much together because, you know, one's highly mobile and the other is rather stationary, but it looks like the switch will be going on to Sigma. So it all starts to fall into place there on that one. Yeah, so interesting. Both sides going to be rocking that McCree. Uh, not usually the pick you see, but I think again, the far in the sky means that that's kind of what you have to go with. But Fanta uh, eliminating the Harmacy portion of that very quickly. Yeah, you have to think that that's going to make Gadara play a little bit more cautiously. Going to have to pull back, play with the team, in fact, as we see. And a big kill on the Diablo. Wow, Diablo going down is big, but it's going to get res, but not before Fanta finds Gadara on the far. And there it is. Uh, I honestly don't really know how this is going to go. The Kuwait has such a high point presence, but the damage coming out of Portugal is no less tenacious. Yeah, absolutely. And <laughs> right now, tenacious as it may be, it looks like the point is going to go in favor of Kuwait. I mean, to be fair, Portugal's trying to hold this for as long as possible. And wow. now they're getting some kill turnarounds. This might be what they needed. Yeah, grabbing the healer, Raviance goes down, that's not good, there's a main tank, so all of a sudden, Portugal looking very good on the point, Pona flexing on that McCree action, no one says this town ain't big enough for the two of them, but apparently it's too big for McCree plus a Farah and a Mercy, and BAM! Portugal makes a statement! Yeah, Portugal really doing their best to turn that around, couldn't be happier if you're on the side of that team, and as soon as Kuwait lost their Orisa, it was looking grim, because then you have no ground presence except for that Sigma, can quickly get overwhelmed, and the Far is either going to have to drop down on the point or hope she can get some massive kills before things go too poorly out of their favor. So right now, Portugal on the good foot. Yeah, this is good times for Portugal, not so good times for Kuwait. They must make their way onto the point, and the ult advantage is not really clear from either side. Barrage is coming up from both, but Fanta, they're going to have to be the ones that make this initiation if they want to take that point. Ooh, <laughs> Gadara going to be the one getting the first kill, and both far is going down. Doesn't look like, it looks like both will be ending up getting brought back up. Oof, and the high noon goes out from Diablo. That's not going to result in any kills. Let's see if Pona can find up anything else, but there's a synchronized man. Sigma's creepy, and BAM! Kuwait with the kills! 
Yeah, absolutely. Looking good for Kuwait to get the retake. In fact, they're already going to have the point. Just The kills were just a little bit excessive at that point. But you know, you'll take the free ult charge if you can get it. And speaking of ults, we're going to be seeing Portugal come back with a big bevy of ults. Yeah, this is going to be a little nasty. Mia is going to have the Valkyrie coming online. There's a nano boost. Early Antonine comes out from Raviance. It doesn't really get what you think. And that's going to be, that's going to be, ooh, big nap time for Poda. That's going to be a high noon. That's not going to lead this fight off. But Gadara finds Fanta, and that is going to be the fight opener. Yeah, that is crucial. When your McCree is asleep, you have to pray that that far is not going to take massive advantage of that. And <laughs> if the far is dead, doesn't even matter. Gadara going to be getting some good value despite getting knocked down during that <laughs> barrage is going to open it up for portugal to retake they're going to be feeling pretty good about this one three they've got a few more ultimates still in the pocket only used about half last time yeah pona has yet to pop that high noon that since they've gotten it and instead it's just going to be the old flashbang head click and you like to see it but if you're kuwait you don't like it because they almost evened up the percentage here and with an early kill onto diablo it's not looking good for this retake Ooh, yeah, and a big grab coming through, or big grab <laughs> flux, rather. Oh, they're going to take opportunity of that to secure some kills. And right now, it's just not looking good for Kuwait. Yeah, speaking of that Zarya, man, I wonder if we're ever going to see her again. But anyways, more to the <laughs> point, Pona coupling that high noon with the Gravitic Flux means that it's a definitive fight victory. But now it's going to be one last retake attempt for Kuwait to determine the Oasis winner. Yeah, and Portugal looking a little bit drier on ults than they have for these last couple of fights. They're only going to be having the Nano, Pono, Gadara, both viable targets for that Nano, depending on how quickly the Faro goes down. But uh, we're just going to see how it breaks. And yes, yeah, so Pono goes down early into the fight. That's not going to be good for Portugal's defense. Nano Boost has gone into the Funk to Farah. They're going to start with that Barrage. Mia goes down. Gadara is soon to follow. Lonely finds the Ana duel, but I have a feeling this is going to be a little bit of an extension for the Kuwait uh, team here on Oasis. Yeah, Kuwait going to be breathing a little bit of life into their gameplay right now, making sure that they can stay up, healthy, wealthy, and wise. But now it's going to be a, an even drier old fight for the side of Portugal. They're going to have to get into the mid fight before either Gadara or Lemonada are going to be having those ults online. And they're going to have to deal with the high noon. That's not something you want to put a Faro against. Yeah, no way. It definitely knocks the pharmacy right out of the sky, whether they get killed or not. Meanwhile, Portugal, they are pretty much just going to have Barrage and Bongos. Maybe Mia can build up to that Valkyrie quickly, but it's going to be Lorp flexing their own ultimate status. No kills coming out of it yet, but that is going to deter. Uh, at least that's going to be a kill onto Mia. Yeah, some mercy on mercy crime. <laughs> Both members of the Kuwait team winning in their respective pharmacy okay. duels. Funk they're going to be taken down, but you got to think that's not going to matter when they have the res. Yeah, so yeah, the res is going to come up. Pona, you know, they did their best, but now it's it's looking pretty good for Kuwait. Portugal, again, they have some ults coming online, and this is going to be the fight to throw them out. The Gravitic Flex goes in. Many damages coming in. Diablo finds Gadara. Not good for Portugal. Oh, jeez. Ah, that's it. Oh, yeah. You got to think Kuwait's going to be pretty much a lock, but as I say that... <laughs> Portugal turning it around, at least for a moment. Aww. This is getting bare bones in terms of manpower. Yeah, that was just a city of barrages. Oasis is going to end up going towards Kuwait, who, after a retake, hold on to the match. But woof, what, uh, that, this is a nice, nice even round, and I'm super digging what these teams are bringing out. Yeah, both teams kind of showing their strengths here a little bit. I think that... Uh, they were pretty quick to go with the Farah, and you know, I'm, I've, I've always been a fan of Farah ever since this game came out, so I'm, I'm always going to love seeing it. And you know, when you talk Farah, you have to talk about the McCree possibility for a counter. We've seen that. It, it's, it's just basic Overwatch math here, three. Yeah, so, yeah, the McCree comes out, and that's going to be really nice. I, it's, Overwatch is a game of switches, it's a game of hero compositions, and, you know, trading off in the rock, paper, scissors has to happen. Both Faras, really solid play, but both McCrees, also really solid. And we even got to see both teams bringing out the Ana at the end, so it's, it's not necessarily Mirror, but it's Mirror. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was looking very tit-for-tat in terms of the compositions. We didn't see a lot of swap-ups, we didn't see one team kind of favor something a little 
non-traditional, which I think is all right. There's certainly nothing too wrong with that. We will be moving on to our next map that is going to be Route 66. We will be moving straight on to our escort map, if I am not mistaken. So overall, I'm pretty, pretty excited to see this map. I like the overall look of Route 66, but even more so, I think it does open up quite a few different avenues for play. Three, you got any predictions here? Widowmaker. I would love to see some more Widowmaker play. I, I have a feeling we're going to be seeing Farah. Uh, Farah, except for the final phase of Route 66, Farah is pretty much, you got you got to lock that in. It's 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 such a solid pick. The skybox is huge. And there's even a potential for some environmental kills, depending on how you throw it in the initial point. But Widowmaker, I think instead of McCree, we might be seeing some Widowmaker counters for that fight in the sky. Yeah, absolutely. And me personally, I'm hoping we get to see it go to that third point, either on, on either side of the defense and attack, because that's where you start to see that Doomfist coming in. And I'm excited to see these teams play Doomfist if they choose to go with it. I, I don't know if they necessarily have a, a crack shot Doomfist, but I'm, I'm hopeful that we can see some of those fun fighter style mechanics come through for the time being. However, definitely seems reasonable. We might see the Farah on that first point here on Route 66. Yeah, so Portugal going to be coming out on defense to start with, and if I were Portugal, knowing how well Kuwait fought back there, and like, again, Portugal, they they had a bit of the, the, the play in there, and Kuwait was able to pull it out, so I'm curious as to what they're going to be going with, and the answer actually is going to be no far as showing from either side, not no long range at all, actually. Portugal putting up a very brawly comp. Yeah, this is this is very interesting. So we're seeing the double shield come out from Portugal. And in response, or at least in anticipation, we're seeing Kuwait operate with Functa on that sim. If that's yes. the case, I think it's it's a very rock, paper, scissors style here, because that sim, if she doesn't get close, can't do anything. Yep. Meanwhile, though, if Diablo actually comes out, uh, this might be one of the first pirate ship attempts we've seen in the new barriers meta but portugal setting up very close it's going to be difficult to get that to the cart and here they go yeah we're certainly going to be seeing them roll out here some big healing has the potential to come through but there's going to be a very forward hold from <laughs> the side of portugal what look at that the teleporter goes up to the top of the train the entire team just completely takes the advantage and now diablo has free reign to bring the bastion hell down yeah godara goes down very quickly there's a tank etf i really like this play coming out from kuwait yeah kuwait playing it very smart gonna be operating with just a blender of bastion bullets to come through the bastion still posted up behind the car he's not even on it quite yet making sure that if anybody sneaks around to the other side just absolutely tears them up like I find shredded meat. Yes, yeah, Symmetra's Teleporter is my new favorite MVP for this particular setup. Godara has now switched onto the far end. Lonely going to be bringing up the Zenyatta, which is crucial for unseating a Bastion from that cart, though Godara is going to do just fine on their own with some rocket action. Yeah, it was just the Sigma Shield falling a little bit short from 287 main. And this time, it's looking like the Mercy Res is going to be coming through. And surprisingly, the Sim has not been doing much for Shield Break. I'd say that the Sim's Teleporter has been their most crucial asset this fight. Yeah, it's been easily the MVP, though now as the close range brawl does go into effect, Lonely is going to get vaporized so quickly. Symmetra's uh, beam at its max power is almost, I think, almost as deadly as a Zarya 100% charge. Yeah, it is definitely very high up there going to be moving forward however a lot of bolts having been built up for the side of kuwait they're going to be having four online both dps bolts and both support bolts meaning a lot of power can come through here with those bastion shells in that tank form meanwhile portugal has almost nothing to show for the, the frankly like uh, desperate defense that they've been bringing in Q7, uh, Kuwait 7 main is going to be tossing out. What? Unbelievable. You can't have those kills coming out so quick into the fight. So Lemonada goes down very quickly. There's no longer a Mercy to pick up the res. Yeah, it's not going to be possible for that res to come through. You have to be on the spot with that immortality field prevent the death as opposed to just reversing it. And we're seeing a couple heroes on the side of Portugal take up a high ground, but it might not be enough. Yeah, this is the opportunity where you would have liked to see the Symmetra Teleporter precede the Bastion Ultimate so that they could get a little closer to that Skybox. Ultimately, we're ah, oh, there's the Symmetra Ult, so now it's going to be a game of which side of the barrier are you going to fight on? Ghidara says, I'm going to fight in your backline, taking out <laughs> Kuwait 7 main, but the kills just keep coming in for... Oh, oh no. 
Yeah, Portugal is looking really hamstrung right now. <laughs> a big boulder from the top of the building from 7 main. Gonna be helping to secure this second point. Pona, each time, been the last man standing, but not quite able to win it out for the team. Gonna be taking out Fonkta, which I guess is all right. You're not gonna have that early setup for Teleporter if you need it, but either way, we're gonna get a nice reset coming through here. And Gadara on the Junkrat. This is not something that's too commonly seen. This is the first time I've actually seen Junkrat in quite a while. Yeah, and point C though, with the far, the, you know, you don't really get to take advantage of the far, but it looks like they want some of that barrier busting explosions to come in. So there's the drag. Oh, oh, so the big field. Oh, it's damage time. Portugal really wants this push to stop right here, right now. <gasps> the immortality matrix, excuse me, goes down very quickly. But yeah. there's the Gravitic Flux. Ah, oh, jeez. And surprisingly, nobody still has gone down yet, despite the massive amount of damage coming through. In fact, Q Diablo going to be the first one to drop, but the res might be coming through by the side of Lorp. Yeah, Lorp gets the res off, and just in time, Diablo has the ult just about ready. Ah, they go down quite quickly. Ah, there it is. Pona pops off. Portugal stabilizing quite nicely, though. They are in for a very long four-minute hold. Yeah, and all of a sudden that jump crowd's starting to make a lot more sense in these tight corridors. Mia going to be able to drop that amplification matrix. Gadara throwing pills that now deal, what, 100 or 240 damage on a direct impact? That is crucial. You like to see that, especially with that Orisa Bongo. That's going to be pretty lethal no matter who you hit. Yeah, that's real nice to see that. Oh, and there's that. Oh, so Fanta going down in the fight very early on. The other going to get a res, but that's, again, a resource you don't want to have to commit so early on. Radiance also going to be also with that big fat. There it is. Batiste drops it. It's damage time. Yeah, however, the Sigma Shield going to go out right in front of it, try to prevent all that damage, and a big sim wall to bisect the damage amplification matrix, making them have to take some very funky angles. Ew, the Junkrat going to be dropping. Yeah, that's huge. That's such a good counter. Never even really thought about that before because you don't just you just don't see a lot of symmetry play. But that ultimate usage was fantastic. Completely counteracts Baptiste. But Pona again finds Fanta, and yet that might not be a necessary uh, victory for Portugal because the rest comes in and the kills are huge. Pona does find J34, eh, but I don't think that's going to be enough to stop this from happening. And yeah, there's going to have to be some last minute stall here. Gadara going to be having that tire. If somebody can get on the point, it's going to be Lemonade at the last moment. Yep, and so there you have it. It's Portugal with a last minute, last stand defense. Their drug crack tire comes out though. This could be kind of huge. The Maywell comes in, but Diablo actually falls. They're not going to be able to affect anything else in this fight. Drug crack tire gets nice. two. Huge. Yeah, Gadara absolutely using that. The fight was already leaning a little bit in the favor of Portugal, but they'll take that Junkrat tire to secure the win. Gadara are going to be switching on this Doomfist. That's what I wanted. I'm ready to see it, but they have to be careful. Diablo has that Blizzard ready at the hip to go, and there's not a lot to counter it. They have a Transcendence from Lonely, though. Yeah, you could figure that maybe Junkrat would have been awesome for this final defense again if they could just build their tire faster, but Doomfist, as Waltham has mentioned, way better at securing those kills, except you gotta keep them alive. Yeah, you definitely have to keep members alive to get any value out of it. And right now that Sim using those teleports to just navigate however they want on the field. Gadara trying to get some value, not quite able to. Yep, and there it is. Fonk defines Gadara very quickly. Blizzard goes down. There's no Diva to lock that stuff up. And that's two freezes, but the Immortality Field is there. It goes down first. Ravens on. Oh, Fonk drops the big barriers. This time, however, Batiste was ready, and J34 goes down very quickly. Yeah, Fonk just playing around that Ori shield, trying to get as much charge as possible. But Gadara doesn't give a damn about that. Just going to punch them right in the face, making sure they secure those kills. And secure this hold, they've done some great stall coming out here from the side of Portugal. Yeah, Portugal's been utterly fantastic. It was roughly a one-sided Route 66 right up until we got to that big fight. And it even looked like Kuwait was going to push it through. Portugal, uh, I think that tire really changed everything for them. Yeah, it certainly did. Junkrat's not even on the field anymore, but I think they're still feeling the effects of the Blastmaster himself. And now they're going to be using the Graviton Flux here, perhaps, in this next team fight as they do have it online. Yep, and here they go. Kuwait still trying to take this high ground on top of the big 18-wheeler. A no, And now they rotate back onto the point. The Gravitic Flux is here. Fonkta having switched onto the Reaper, maybe to get some more kills. But instead, Diablo goes down very quickly. The Dragon's on the field and ultimates for days but it's just trades left and right, but that's gonna favor Portugal. Yeah, as you hear about talked all the time, trades in this phase of the map is always going to favor the defenders. 
the gra the mini grab trying to come out from Lemonada, the halt rather trying to come out pull that reaper back into the fight so he can get staggered for just a little bit and it is looking grim for the full completion on kuwait's side here yeah not looking good you have almost no ults to work with j34 is gonna have something and you know you can almost write off a doomfist ultimate except when it gets the kills but diablo's gonna open it up on bona losing bona huge portugal main gps there's the doomfist ult coming down it doesn't get any kills but he drops his big times so that means it's a coalescence actually coming out but Fonkta goes down early oh uh, this is crazy trade still yeah, Funkta, one of those members who can just put down so much damage on that Reaper, but with them dead, it doesn't even look like it's going to really matter because there is just so much cart presence from the side of Kuwait. They might just take it. Yeah, Podna having jumped onto a Tracer at the last minute to contest, but it's not going to happen. Kuwait finally pushes it through in overtime, but man, four minutes is not the length of time I would enjoy holding for, yet Portugal took it that far. Yeah, I definitely have to tip my hat to Portugal. They had a stellar last point defense. They didn't make it all the way, but with the time bank that, you know, Kuwait had built up, it's kind of not a big surprise. They're going to be looking to uh, reverse the stakes here this time as they're going to be looking to complete with the best time bank possible. So to quote uh, Soldier 76, it is indeed time to raise the stakes. Uh, I'm not hungry. Are you hungry? Anyways, uh, so it's <laughs> Route 66. This time, Portugal making their offense, but... As Kuwait has finished the map in its entirety, the win condition is considerably more difficult. Yeah, it's, it's now got to be, I don't want to say a perfect game, but it has to be a game that has perfect completion here for the side of Portugal. They have to make it all the way. And, you know, we talk about, you know, the mentality of attacking or defending first. They know what they have to do. They, they have their goal set in mind. That might help them. That might hurt them. Who knows? Yeah, I, you, there's something to be said for, like, you put up a fantastic defense, and now you get the opportunity to show that you can bring it on offense as well. But if you are Kuwait, you're probably feeling pretty good because you also just had a fantastic run at it, and you finished the map in overtime, which on Escort now with the new rules, you know, it's been a while, but that, that's solid. Yeah, absolutely. And we're now again going to be seeing the Bastion come out. It's going to be on the defense, setting up, attempting to set up right near Cart, but just CC'd and burned down by Gadara. Yeah, big oof. Uh, Gadara rocking the rockets. That's pretty much exactly what you want to see out of your far play. You have the barriers to contend with, but also with the Mercy going down. Yep, there it is. Diablo is even going to switch over to the. Widowmaker. This fight is not technically over. There's, you know, Fanta having fun on the cart. They are going to get forced down eventually. And playing that far up means that Kuwait gets one more shot at this before point A is taken. Yeah, it's going to be very fortunate for the side of Kuwait. But Portugal, man, they just kind of blitzkrieged their way onto the point and just absolutely rushed there. And, you know, it, it's looking good. They're, they're, we're seeing some good aggression come out. They know when to capitalize. They saw that Bastion go down and immediately got a lot more scrappy with it. Yeah, speaking of Gadara going in the back line, looks like they got caught by Q87 main, who forces Gadara back. But instead, now it's going to be kind of another poke face. But if you don't play on the cart, the cart going to keep moving. Yeah, absolutely. And again, you have to be worried about that with Fonkta on this far. There's not as many ground forces. You have those multi-angles of attack, but you don't have those multi-angles of contest. Yeah, nasty, nasty business. And Fonkta's still building for that ultimate. And now that the Immortality Matrix field is down and ATF goes down, there it is, Gadara. The kills are starting to come in majorly for Kuwait. And Diablo uh, just casually pops off. Yeah, <laughs> Diablo performing very well here going to be using that Widowmaker now moving forward switching off the Bastion from a few fights ago and you know the Widowmaker having these long lines of sight they're going to be put putting themselves up toe to toe with Pona who's now also going to be hopping on the purple to hair sniper assassin so we're going to be seeing how those two players play against one another or perhaps how Pona plays against Fonsta. Yeah, I finally get the Widow duel that I was so hungry for, but instead it looks like it's going to be really scrappy. Kuwait, however, building up so many ultimates, I don't think there's any way Portugal takes this fight without early kills. 
Yeah, Portugal's really gonna have to be decisive here, especially with that rocket barrage. Fonkta <laughs> pretty much winning it by themselves. So that pushes over. I like that Fonkta, they did all that work and then they got to sleep afterwards. Man, <laughs> do I feel you. But now we're looking at a little bit of the equalizing. Lemonade is gonna be building up to the Bongos. ATF has the Grivic Flux. This is gonna be a much more even push. Yeah, it certainly will. There's going to be a few support ultimates online, but aside from that, not looking at a whole lot. As you mentioned, the Bongo is going to be online, but really the air dominance coming out from Funkta, looking to really have helped turn things around. The Widow played by Pona, not even going to be able to seem to really oppress that much. Yeah, the issue is if you're a Widowmaker, cool, you have a lot of options to take out that Farah. The problem is uh, Diablo. Diablo is also on the Widowmaker, which means you get to pick one. You can only point your sights at one of them. And what we've just seen here is Quaid 7 Main is going to take advantage of that, eliminating Pona from the map. Despite their prodigious skill on Hitscan, uh, it's not looking good for Portugal right now. With 45 seconds left, they have to make a play at this. Yeah, that's certainly going to have to be something that they just kind of grit their teeth and get down towards. Uh, but as you were mentioning, those angles with Farah and Widow, uh, that is only amplified if you're playing kind of at the same angle. So the Farah has to peek both of you at the same time. But it's going to be an early kill onto the Baptiste who gets rest up anyway. Yeah, so Mercy is there, ready to have that come in, and uh-oh, here he goes. Pona decides enough is enough. Diablo, you're going down. The Gravitic Flux is here, though, and J34 finds the big healer. I always say it, I'd rather have a healer than a DPS. Yeah, absolutely, especially if it's a Mercy. In this case, maybe not so much, but the Barrage coming in once again from Fonkta, only trying their best to just do a little bit of fragging, does not seem like it's going to quite go in their favor, however. Yeah, it's interesting. Portugal actually technically had a shot at this, but Lonely's the lonely stand on the cart. The Hammond is in. Now it's Samba. It's just anyone. Oh, Winston is here. Unbelievable. And the kills still trading left and right. Yeah, absolutely. It's looking like Portugal might be able to get some points here for this map. The Doomfist has been playing a massive amount of endurability here. Just been on the point for so long. Has not gotten knocked off quite yet. He's been playing very conservatively. Gadara, I think, been kind of a boon to this team. Yeah, this is nuts. I've never seen a stall go on this long before. Can you even call it a stall anymore? But now Bongo's on the field. Diablo comes in with a big kill. Gadara can only do so much, but now they're going to be able to drop a big kill. And oh, it's so close. I don't even know how this is going to fly. And this was really smart. Hona on this Sombra. If you're looking at this last minute stalls, you might think, why the Sombra? She's not the fastest. But you realize that the defense is going to be coming out with a Doomfist to get there as quick as possible. You get to hack onto the Doomfist. He's useless. I really like that. And it looks like Pona might even just keep riding with this pick. Sir Waltham uh, dropping some sick lines here. Uh, that's kind of awesome. Dig that. But yeah, oh, Gadara goes down quick, though. So two minutes earned by Portugal having taken point A. They must complete the entire map. But I don't think Kuwait's real happy about that particular play there. Yeah, I think Portugal needs to kind of have a reverse performance. They can take as long as they want on this mid section, on the first two sections, but they need to make this third section go as quick as possible so they have more time in the time bank. But really, it's going to be tough. They have to go up against the Valk, against another rocket barrage, and we've seen Funk to be so proficient oh. with those. And fascinating, Gadara still doing just such a fantastic job. They're sticking with the Winston, which I super like. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. The barriers that they can just rip through is unbelievable, but instead they're actually going to go, oh, what a hook! Yeah, quite big. This Roadhog played by 7 main going to be playing to just a, 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 a very serviceable level. Going to be hooking the Doomfist. Do you like to see that? trades for days and portugal's given as good as they're getting they're moving the cart right along this hammond working out fantastic the, the rather the hammond winston that's so punchy yeah just run hack fist next time <laughs> easy but really portugal I, i'm it feels like this is a comp that they are much more comfortable on and that they <gasps> that they're gonna be able to just they're gonna oh they don't quite get second point Wow, Fonkta comes in with a 2k, but yeah, no, they die, and then that's going to be it. What a fantastic, fantastic push. So now they have two minutes left on the clock, and yeah, Waltham, I agree. What started as a stall composition is now turning into something that uh, Portugal is really pushing through. Yeah, we will be seeing a little bit of a change up the tank line. Uh, no more Hammonds, no more Winston. They're going to be getting up the Primal and the... Rip. Uh, the mines, but they do have the EMP ready to go to build up more ult charge for those tanks. Gonna see it pop off here in just a second, I anticipate. Also, Diablo has that high. Oh, what a hack! 
but it missed the McCree! Oh, but he only gets one before he gets immediately eliminated in Portugal. Uh, I don't know where this is coming from, but God, uh, Gadara, holy snap! Yeah, Gadara absolutely ripping and tearing. You, you hear about how the Doomfist can be so hindered by a hack, but when you get mass hacks on the opponents, Doomfist can look pretty good there too. It's just going to be one more fight if Portugal wins this in order for them to take it, but they did use quite a bit of ults in that last fight. Yeah, it's big ult time for Kuwait, who have literally almost everything to throw into this, and they are throwing everything into it. It's the whole hog, it's the damage boosting. This is going to be difficult even for Gadara to pop off here. And they do take out Q87 main, so I don't know. That gets res though, so let's see, what are you even going to do? Yeah, and the nice thing about this is that Doomfist by Gadara is building up so much space uh, just in the literal physical knockback for Pona to try to do some work. At least that was the plan before they got frozen and juggled by J34 and the May. This is bonkers. Fanta goes down. The uh, Batiste immortality field is also done. And man, J34 making a stand, popping out every cooldown they can think of. The Bastion, oh! the Bastion's coming out. And Bonk there it is. is. Defense, the Bastion. What is even going on right now? This is the Overwatch at its brawliest. Oh, the nice Sigma Shield coming out from ATF to just lock down that high noon. Gonna be dropping seven main right onto the floor. And Portugal might make this in just as much time, if not more. Holy moly, they do! Unbelievable! And they do it with time on the clock! Ten seconds remaining! That went from an overtime push on point A to finishing ahead of Kuwait on Route 66. Whole damn! Yeah, I think it's definitely looking like a big turnaround for Portugal, especially considering their first offense, or their first defense, excuse me. Um, and now they're finishing with more time on the clock. It's exactly what I said needed to happen. You can, you can take as long as you want on the second two points, as long as you finish. But the more time you finish with in third, the quicker you finish that third point, the better it's going to be for you on this, re or this uh, round three. And... Right now, I think they're seeing the benefits of that. It's only 10 seconds, but that might be a, enough to get another team fight in. Yep, and now the win condition has changed once again, or rather, it's back to the way it was on square one. Kuwait must make the best push that they possibly can. Portugal's defense is going to set the stage for their uh, answer, so to speak. But we've seen teams take it to finale in overtime. And if it's going to happen, it's going to be Diablo on the Bastion. I don't see that symmetry, though, and I super liked that play. Yeah, and, you know, this to me seems like a very risky gambit, because the Bastion can be kind of played against ATF, in fact, going to be on the D.Va, who can just gobble up all that Bastion's damage. Uh, they're going to be having a very forward hold. Again, you talk about risky plays, this might be another one. Yeah, and so there it is, though. Fankta comes out with the Farah very early on, trying to get a leg up on those barriers, and leg up they do. Diablo does go down, but uh, tank via DPS. Uh, rather, I rather get the mercy because Mia resurrects Lemonada immediately, but they have a cart presence now, and uh, it looks like Kuwait is doing their duty. Yeah, Kuwait's trying to make it work for him as Gadara drops, and now the number's not necessarily looking so good for the defensive team here, and it looks like a little bit of progress is going to get built up, but that's all right. You kind of have to expect that that's going to happen. And right now, Portugal just trying to burn as much time off the clock as possible, so they have to spend as much time in overtime on the card as possible. I like how, despite the 12% boost in requirement for ult economy for everyone, Raviance already is sitting on his Batiste ultimate. Literally no one else has an ultimate. Diablo also back on the Bastion. It looks like Kuwait is settling in on a pirate ship. They are sailing the seven seas. It is time. Overtime has begun. If they are removed from the cart, that's it. Yeah, but on the plus side, that means that they will, on the plus side for Portugal, rather, that means they're not going to have the Bastion ult as quickly charged up, although Diablo shredding down that far on midair is going to help build that up. Yep. Oh, Dragon's on the point, and they boost them out of the field, but it doesn't matter because everyone's dead anyways, so yeah, GG Diablo. Yeah, Diablo's really helping to secure this team's position right now, just laying on that cart. It looks like the little bit of stall is going to be coming out, but it's not going to be enough. The cart's going to roll through first point, still in overtime. And right now is where Portugal needs to decide how they want to tackle getting everybody off the point. Yeah, so this is the worst case scenario for Portugal. They have given up point A 
And now, a angry Kuwait is going to start taking the fight to them. They only need one person on the cart. Now, granted, if you can gank that person on the cart, that's huge. This is interesting, though. They're keeping a Sigma on it, which is normally the role held by the off-healer. Yeah, the Sigma able to place the shield a little bit farther, so it, it makes sense. And, and we're going to be seeing Gadara dry, dive right onto the cart. <laughs> Lord dropping, that's going to be crucial. No res for the attacking team now, but... Q8 Diablo gonna be just killing before anybody can do anything about it. Yeah, this is bonkers. The Gravitic Flux has gone in. Lemonada is down. Pona also falls. Uh, and Funk is gonna take a nap on the cart while it gently carries them further on. Uh, this is crazy. Uh, Portugal used every ultimate that they had, and they weren't able to unseat Kuwait, who are now sitting on, again, Diablo just chilling like a villain. Like, this is crazy. Yeah, and I think that the switch from Portugal to ATF on that Sigma makes a lot of sense. If he's able to build up that ult, he may be able to perform what is known as occasionally a SIG-9. So being able to pull everybody off the cart with his ult, it's going to have to take a little bit of ult charge. But Pona getting funked is going to be a good start in this fight. Yeah, that is massive. That's exactly how you want to start that fight. Eliminate one of the serious damage dealers. Warp goes down. Pona pops off. Yes, Portugal stopped the cart right there. This is going to be their big chance to make this overtime play. And, and, ah, so close. And once Batiste goes down, that's going to be overtime going out. Yeah, and I think that the crucial mistake coming through from Kuwait may have been setting that Bastion so far up because once one member on the cart falls, it starts getting tense as to whether Kuwait's going to be able to hold. So more and more members have to one by one their way onto cart. That Bastion's getting left with less and less support until eventually he has to drop down and he just gets cleaned up. It's it's a tough spot, but they still made it a very good amount of distance. Yeah, that is nuts. 84.6 meters all the way to point B, plus they also took point A. Portugal, again, has their win condition set out for them. However, since the map was not completed by Kuwait, this could result in a Portugal victory. All Kuwait has to do, however, simply hold the line. Yeah, I mean, you say all, all do, however, the certainly not making it seem that easy for either side i mean both putting up some darn good fights and once again on the attack we're seeing the bastion it's it's a it's a day of bastions here and i would hope that kuwait having run that strat would mean that they have some experience defending against that strat or at least know of some weaknesses because they're certainly going to need to deal with it if they don't want Godard to just run this field yeah, so there you have it. It's going to be Gadara setting up on the Bastion this time. Looks like Portugal taking a leaf out of Kuwait's book. But I don't know if it's going to work out as well for them. Pona hopping onto the Widowmaker trap, possibly to try and get some of those early picks. But a de May is going to make this a little interesting. Yeah, it certainly will. I mean, that walking, you know, it's just basically another form of shielding. And, you know... We talked about how it was just one more team fight, and Portugal might need to take advantage of that because already they lose Pona right on that Widowmaker very early on. Yeah, and Kuwait setting up this close to the opener, or to the spawn rather, means that they are going to get the advantage of having another fight should they fall. However, any kill Portugal gets is going to be huge, and yep, there it is. They get so many way too quickly. Immortality field be damned. So let me ask you, any kill they get is going to be crucial. What about any three kills? Because that's exactly <laughs> what happened there. They just let the kills flow through. Six um, kills? <laughs> yeah, they're getting the whole team. They're getting the six piece in there. But right now, not a lot of ults being built up for either team. So we might be seeing a little bit more of a fundamental fight for this second recontest, which you got to imagine uh, Kuwait's definitely going to be going for. Yep, and so here we go. Portugal has begun their own overtime push. In five seconds, it will be do or die, sudden death mode engaged. And now it's up to an ultless team to make the defense. Uh, it's also up to an ultless team to make the offense, actually. Ooh, and that was a massive play from Fonkta, using the wow. Maywall to lift the Bastion up. Gadara getting burned down as soon as that comes through. That was so well coordinated. Yep, and so there you go. Uh, Gadara is going to start this off. Portugal, however, uh, making a very good play. Diablo is going to find Gadara, but Fonte goes down. Dragon's going to go in, not going to get anything. Yes, it's done. Wham, bam, thank you, man. Portugal will have a very good shot at this, but Kuwait having set up on the cart, that's going to be difficult. Oh, the Sig-9! What is it? They left! The Sig-9 comes through, lifting the Sim, lifting the Mercy off the cart, not quite able to hold it, and Kuwait going to be winning it off the back of that Sigma ult. 
Man, that was intense round of Route 66. So that's a question that I've had for a long time, aka since Sigma was released and I lack the uh, energy patience time to test it. Can Sigma's ult bring people out of contest? The answer, yes, it can. Unbelievable play. It used to be relying on a Farah boop, you know? Yeah, you used to have to try to have so many different things. Lucio, Farah, Hog to pull somebody off the point. But in the end, it looks like Sigma, with the exception of Ori, Reaper, and May. So, you know, those characters are even stronger, I guess. Uh, can really just pull everybody up into the air, uh, literally off the point. So they're going to they're gonna be feeling a little bit nervous about that one as they get boosted into the sky. Yeah. Uh, speaking of getting boosted into the sky, you called out that May play, popping that Bastion up. That is just such a clutch use of a cooldown. If you can spend a cooldown and kill someone, that is amazing. So there you go. I, Kuwait takes it, and that's two zip. And now we're looking at a bit of a scary situation for Portugal. Yeah, Portugal is going to be in the hot seat. I believe we will be picking the next assault map. It's going to be Temple of Anubis. Not sure what to expect, given the last two maps we've seen. We've seen uh, the players kind of go all over the place here so far, three. Yeah, it's been crazy. I, Despite it being 2-0, though, I can't emphasize enough how strong Portugal is looking. I could definitely see the reverse sweep happening, but equally uh, true is Kuwait. They're, 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 they're very strong. Very, very strong. Yeah, and, you know, I think it's a little bit fair to say that, you know, Kuwait's won both maps, but it was it was competitive for both maps. You know, we went we went two to one on the King of the Hill, the control point. Um, and now as we go uh, on to the escort, both teams completed it in full um, with some really blazing moments at times on both sides. So I'm really excited to see how this Temple of Anubis uh, map kind of shifts things around, see if we're going to see. Um, a different sense of power come through from Portugal. Perhaps they're able to steal it out and win this one in time. We might be seeing that five map if Portugal is able to have a pretty uh, good next couple of maps. Yes, and if they can pull this off on Temple of Anubis, I will be genuinely shocked. I, Waltham and I have talked about this before. I, uh, Anubis is rough. It, it's a rough <laughs> map. It's... You used to see on both sky, you used to see the scores like climbing into the heavens. Uh, Anubis tends to be like either the <laughs> one zip or the two zip kind of thing, you know? <laughs> yeah, Temple of Anubis has a very oppressive second point defense because of the almost immediate defender respawn. Uh, so with something like full sky, sometimes you'll see um, a little bit of... Uh, you have to walk at least a little bit to get back on the point, but <laughs> not the case with Anubis. And for the defense, however, as we look forward, we're going to be seeing a little bit more Junkrat Gadara. You know, after the play on Route 66, I can't even question this Junkrat anymore because we saw it, you know, come through when they needed it most. I think they're just going to try to lean with their best foot forward. It's the only thing they can do. And with Pona on the Widowmaker flying up on the defense, what is Diablo doing? <laughs> Diablo going to be rolling with that Bastion, setting up on the high ground. It's all starting to line up here. The Symmetra, it's Fonkta again. T Symmetra Teleporter uh, MVP, and there's the kill. That opens it up. Gadara down means no Junkrat grenades for you, sir. Uh, but Pona finds Q8, 7 main. That's, again, I'd rather have the tank than the DPS. But Diablo's aggression here on this Bastion is crazy. Yeah, it's no absolutely leaning forward into it. But with that, Snake taking a little bit of a nappy poo, and that's not going to be a good look when you're trying to get that tank bolstered down. But really, nobody on the point right now to defend for Portugal. They're just getting free progress on the side of Kuwait. This is insane. I, If this is the new face of Overwatch, I am such a big fan. I, they've got one person contesting. It's all thanks to Symmetra. Her teleporter has just been wreaking havoc. Lonely refuses to jump down to touch the point, and so... There it is, finally, they come to die. They grab a kill, but it's far too late. Yeah, the kill not going to quite be working for it. Funk the dropping on that sim, but it doesn't even look like it's going to matter. As we see the Wrecking Ball by ATF go out there just to try to stall for a little bit more. They need to build up as much of time bank, but ATF rolls off for just a second, and that's all they need to cap point. Yeah, that was nuts. Uh, Symmetra Teleporter, definitely the MVP of this match. By the way, we've been going nonstop, but remember, Zandi has links in the Twitch feed for a bunch of cool things like the merchandise store. Also, don't forget to throw us a follow and a subscribe if you're feeling so plucky, because if I were you, I would want to see how this match ends and all the rest of them, because this is just absolutely bonkers.
<laughs> and the big punch coming through from Ghidorah right onto what? the sim as she goes through the teleporter. What is even happening? Pona even kills Fonda. He's just chilling up there on the top with the symmetry teleporter. Okay, Pona. Pona on the defense. Change Reaper's designation from DPS to defense hero. Holy moly. Yeah, Reaper just absolutely putting the clamps to these players right now. And again, if you can buy that space for Reaper, if you can allow him to get that close, or if you just br if the opponent just brings that team close to you, then Reaper can just do so much damage. It is not even funny. Long gone are the days where Reaper's no longer meta. Yeah, remember that one time when he used to be like called out for feeding for playing Reaper, and now it's like, no, 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 no. No, Reaper is clutch <laughs> <laughs> it certainly is going to be but also clutch are a lot of ults coming through from the side of kuwait they're going to be having four online if they even choose to use them including the amplification matrix that's that's crucial so the same play again they teleport the bastion up to the high ground it doesn't result in any kills and so they then rotate up oh, there it is atf gets caught a little bit out of position but a little bit is a lot in overwatch and so now the symmetry barrier is down so uh maywall keeps kuwait from entering well done but the sigma is there Q87 main. Uh -oh. And Pona gonna be popping that Death Blossom to try to just get the kills and it's going back and forth, but as we've talked about, that favors the defense. However, the kill's coming through quick enough for the offense on Kuwait's side to be giving themselves the early, or the mid-game advantage rather, and it's not looking like there's gonna be enough in the tank for Portugal. Yeah, Quick 7 main, uh, Sigma, maybe calm down, lad. Like, it's, it, this is a bit much. Like, just kill after kill after kill. You're almost halfway to your next accretion, and almost everyone from Portugal has been eliminated from the point. This is exactly the position you want to be in the defense. Big accretionist, though, uh, is going to get kills. Yeah, the accretion's really good if you have some follow-up there to deal extra damage. Was not the case. <laughs> and Pona getting killed <laughs> right as he teleports. Woo. Yeah, Funkta brings out the barriers to Herald in the round one completion. Three minutes and 13 seconds left on the clock for Kuwait. A fantastic uh, push onto Temple of Anubis, if I do say so myself. But now it's time for Portugal uh, to make their stand. And given that they chose this map, I can only assume they have a lot coming in. Yeah, Portugal may be feeling a little bit nervous after that performance. And you have to expect... You know, the meta's been a little bit wacky with Sigma coming in here. We've seen a lot of Sim lately. We've been seeing a lot of double shield tanks, which was pretty uncommon prior to this uh, to, to this patch. Uh, but really, t Bastion's been seeing a lot more play because Sim's been seeing a lot more play. It's... It's, it's really interesting to see how these heroes, you know, that were once so non-meta or considered cheese characters, just get so much value and be, you know, still still pretty good. I mean, some people might still consider them cheese, but either way, you're getting value from them. Yep, and it is massive. So, uh, yeah, I, if you're Port... If, uh, man, if you're Portugal. If you're Portugal, you have your work hella cut out for you. I, yeah, yeah. There's, I, I, there's I no yeah. doubt about that. Ugh. So there it is. But Funkta, so Funkta, not the Symmetra. Funkta coming in on the Fara. If Mia comes out here on the Brigida, this will literally be the first time I've seen Brigida in a competitive game post patch. So I'm curious to see how this. Yep, there it is. You're ca Aww, you son of a dude. Oh, the the <laughs> there it is. continue on to Anubis. <laughs> but we are seeing the double shield tank come through from both teams. Pona and Ghidorah are going to be running the uh, comp of old with the May and Reaper. <laughs> Pona taking a do uh, rock to the back of the head for the trouble. Yeah, remember that one time when uh, Fara was really good? Yeah, me too. Holy moly, also Radiance finding the kill on Too Lonely. So that's no heals for you. Fangta gets stunned, frozen, dropped. Somehow they're alive. Unbelievable. Also Diablo on the Ash. Uh, also the first time post patch I've seen that. Gonna find the kill on Pona. And now Portugal are in a bit of a bind. They're a little bit split behind enemy lines. Yeah, they're gonna be trying to do a rotation just to regroup, or it looks like they're actually gonna do it to try to get on the point, but they did a little bit half cocked, so they weren't quite able to fully close. And right now it just looks like Kuwait is feeding on the corpses of Portugal right now. Yeah, this is insane. I... Wow, Funkta is just doing so much work on the Fara, and evidence of the fact they are going to have their barrage online before anyone is going to be able to bring an ultimate to bear on either side, except Lonely. Coalescence being such a good ult Oh, there it is! What massive anti-nade coming in! Grabs the Sigma, grabs the Orisa, that's going to be kills 
Funkta goes nuts. Yeah, and I mean, really, it's kind of a no-brainer. You look at Portugal's comp, and aside from maybe some really solid right clicks from Pona with that May, how do you handle Afara? There's no, there's no hit scan. There's nothing like that. But now we're seeing a little bit more of a dive look come through from Portugal. And you know, if this is based off of Route 66, I don't necessarily disagree with it. Gadara and Pona. Um, the Genji Tracer as opposed to the Doomfist Sombra, but I think it's still a valid strategy if they're able to get up there and just apply the damage. Yeah, aside from the Hammond, you could be safe and asking what year is it? Fangta, however, going to be grabbing Mia very quickly into the fight. That's a no bueno situation though if you're Portugal, and the Coalescence is going to come in. I don't know if that's going to keep anyone alive. Bob gets dropped off onto the high ground. That is one of the nastiest places you can drop him. A full vantage of the entire field. Uh, yeah, Katara with his teeny tiny Genji hit pool, HP pool, that's, that's not going to rest. Yeah, Love and Otter going to be in there for just perhaps a bit too long. These tanks not looking like they quite want to leave just yet. But ATF, you got to, my guy. You can't stay in there for too long. Otherwise, you're going to get picked just like that. You hate to see it happen every time. But not even a lot of ult charge built up for the side of Portugal. And they're going to have to go up against four more once again from Kuwait. That rocket barrage, Funkta, we've been talking about it, gets a lot of value for those. So you have to be heads up on a swivel to deal with it. Yeah, so what are your, what is, what do you mean? Oh, so now, there we go. This is a, one of the purest forms of the old dive that we're seeing. It's a Tracer, it's a Genji, it's a dead Ash. So yeah, Portugal switching onto a comp that works for them. Godara goes nuts, Lemonada falls, but the Winston pretty much typically the early kill in that fight. But Kuwait 7 main gonna be evening the score a little, but Warp dying is not gonna make it any easier for Kuwait to hold this. Yeah, but Pona on this Tracer absolutely wow. trying to throw their back out carrying this team right here. Gonna be getting three kills right at the end of it. And their time bank's not gonna be looking as strong as the side of Kuwait, but they are gonna get a chance to attack onto that second point. Yeah, uh, I don't know how heavy the dumbbells that Tracer lifts are, but holy moly, the girl can flex it. Also coming up on a truckload of vaults for Portugal. Uh, going face up into a bunch of ults from Kuwait, but this could be an explosive fight nonetheless. Yeah, Pona has the opportunity to get another very early kill with the mere press of Q. Gonna be a little tough though, as there are airborne targets and very meaty targets to have to deal with. <laughs> Oof, <laughs> and the kill goes in. Yeah, uh-oh, so Gadara drops the blade. Is this gonna be a big push by Portugal? Any kill from the defense is gonna make it tough for them. Yeah, that is certainly true. Lemonada taking down the amplification bongo. Might not be enough though, as they need to get these kills rather quickly, Portugal. And they're just not able to before Lemonada drops. Yeah, that's that's pretty much the way you expect it. If the defense can muster any kind of kill, uh, they're gonna be able to stabilize. They're gonna be able to get that defense going. So it's two minutes, 30 seconds left. Portugal, still a truckload of vaults in the bank and Godara's proficiency on Genji means that they'll probably have a blade ready to go in no time, but they have already dropped well below the time bank. And if they don't finish it with time on the clock, uh, that's it. Yeah, and you know, Godara and Lonely probably gonna be looking to combo the nano blade. Just such a crucial ult, especially if they're able to take down Funkta with one or two swipes of the sword at the same time. But the pharmacy does have that ult online. Uh, it's not going to mitigate the Genji so much, but it's going to apply a lot of pressure to the ground forces that uh, yep. just kind of stay stationary. Speaking of ground forces staying stationary, will they get murdered? Lonely is going to die a lonely death. Kadara actually is going to find the kill. They're going to have something to say. Uh, yeah, they actually grabbed Diablo as well. So this is going to be potentially what opens this fight open. Big Diva Bomb grabs J34 as well. Portugal looking very strong on this offense. Yeah, absolutely. Mia making sure to boop that. <laughs> And boop that player into the D.Va explosion. The sound barrier going to be coming down to provide a little bit more damage. And Pona now switching on to the Widow to try to provide a little bit of long-range pressure. Yep, and there it is. The blade comes out. They kill Q7 main in the middle of their bolt. Uh, looks like that Mercy is not going to be long for this world. Rip in peace, Lord. But there they go, down. Gadara. speaking of carries, holy moly, the Cyborg Ninja with the action plan. Yeah, and Funk did doing a really good job to try to distract a few of the longer range members with that Reaper, just absolutely sticking into the sidelines, uh, really kind of creeping around, and the uh, stability <laughs> is going to come through for Kuwait. Yeah, that, that was rough. Portugal had that locked up 
And uh, Koit says nay, actually. Yeah, and there's only going to be about one or two more pushes from the side of Portugal. Most likely just the one. And Gadara does not want to get picked here, but that's exactly what's going to happen. Yep, and so there it is. Uh, Kuwait stabilizing very nicely. Portugal uh, grabs a, a third, and they they really have to complete this map. Uh, otherwise, it's... I actually don't think... I think that's it. I'm pretty sure Kuwait has just locked up a win here. Even if Kuwait finishes the... Or even if Portugal finishes the map, the only thing they can do is a tie. Yeah, and that will, of course, set us at 2-0 or 2-1. Either way, going to be looking to play their hearts out as that sound barrier from Radiance is going to be coming out, trying to keep everybody up so no early picks going to be taking place here in this Diva fight. Drops the, yeah, Diva drops the bomb just to get a remake. Lemonada actually finds the kill onto Diablo, so this potentially could open it up, but Mia going to be going down. That's a source of healing that's gone. Coalescence, uh, die, die, die. Uh, this is just a old festival for Kuwait, who are going to wrap this up. Overtime takes down. That's it. They take map, and that's 3-0, Kuwait taking the series in total. We're going to grab a fourth round here, however. Yeah, Kuwait was was performing very well. Fonkta, as soon as they got onto the point, able to just apply so much pressure. As we mentioned before, Reaper is so good in those close range areas, and not even areas that are close range, just areas where you're forced to fight close range. So Reaper making sure that nobody can get onto the point. Um without taking excessive amounts of damage was pretty optimal there coming through from the side of Kuwait. Yeah, so well played. Uh, honestly, I really expected Portugal to be able to f push that through at least a couple of those fights that were really going in their favor. Hats off to Kuwait for stabilizing as well as they did and getting the kills that you know keeps the defense rolling. Yeah, absolutely. And we are going to be going on to our last map. It's going to be a hybrid. And it's looking like Hollywood's going to be the map of choice. And, you know, Portugal's really going to have to make something happen here because Kuwait kind of ran away with that last map on uh, Anubis. Yeah, that was utterly bonkers. Uh, Kuwait finishes the map uh, easy peasy lemon squeezy with minutes on the clock. Meanwhile, it's impossible for Portugal to get more than a third. So we're going to be looking at a similar situation, though. It's a hybrid map. It's Hollywood and uh, similar problems going into that first point. But before we go any further, don't forget, Zandi has the links in the Twitch chat. It's going to be the merch store where you can support your favorite teams. It's going to be maybe, if you're so inclined, dropping us a follow and a subscribe if you're feeling plucky up in the top top right of that stream we're happy to have you we're here for the map four it's hollywood waltham is it more far a time i'm certainly gonna hope so i mean funk has been playing really well on this farah even if the map is not perfectly suited for her i think that they might still try to make it work i think streets phase probably gonna be a little bit more friendly given how much high ground and rooftops there are but at the same time that also means there's a lot more potential for widow so it's kind of a back and forth situation but does look like Funk is at least going to load out with the Farah to start. And I don't disagree. Funk and Lorp have been looking like a good team so far. Yep. And it's been a pairing that I think has been working out really well for them. The whole... The, the, the Fonkta, you know, the, you can't have a far mercy without the mercy, and Lorp has been doing fantastically, providing the support necessary. Also, Radiance dropping up some sick anti nades, and there, okay, so there it is. Pona on the McCree. That's going to be the answer to Funk to Farah. If that is hopefully going to be shots. the case. Yeah, <laughs> that is hopefully going to be the case. Um, I'm a little curious because usually in this kind of a situation, we've seen Ash since the sight lines are just a little bit longer. It gives you that potential. Um, as well, Ash, a little bit of uh, more punch if you're able to get the headshots and uh, less fall off or uh, fall at a longer range, if I'm not mistaken. But it looks like they're just going to be trying to rock the McCree. Bonk's taking down Mia to start, though. Yeah, if you're going to be a Doomfist, you got to be aggressive. And taking out the back line like that is exactly what the Doctor ordered. Look at this play. It's perfect. The Halt brings in the Mercy, and Gadara follows up. That's perfect. Fantastic. Wow, holy moly, are they popping off. Yeah, Gadara knowing exactly where that Mercy is going to be based on the Farah death. is going to be ready to just set up for it, and a big rock going on to Radiance. Yeah, that's huge. Uh, Fangta opening up that kill very quickly. That's going to be a long time for that McCree to get back. Godara is really going to have to flex the DPS powers if they're going to keep this hold happening. And yo, a little help from a friend. Sigma finds Fangta with a sick rock. Yeah, absolutely. Pony going to be switching on to the 76 just to get the point a little bit faster. 76 able to use those kneecaps a little bit more proficiently than most other players. And the kills going through Diablo going to be taking a quick drop. 
Yeah, so interesting is this trades back and forth, but Kuwait showing a proficiency at taking a stand on the point, grabbing some space. The tanks are here, it's good times, and Lorp is still alive, which means heals for days. Yeah, certainly going to be the case. However, Ult's looking a little bit strong on the offensive side. Kuwait going to be having a, a rough count for Ult's online for the next fight. However, it's looking like there's still a little bit of fight left in the side of Portugal. They're going to be going for it and getting pretty aggressive onto it. They're just going to contest, too. Wow, Immortality Matrix coupled with a Transcendence. They really want this fight to happen, and Diablo going in quickly. That's going to be a big one, but oh, wow. Q87 main goes absolutely ham. Oh, jeez. Yeah, and they try to get the Sig9 onto the cart. Not going to matter, though. They just get these standard kills onto the cart. And with that, we are going to be seeing only about two or three ults, depending on if Funk is going to be staying on that Pharah online for the next fight. The Doomfist Meteor Strike is going to be a little bit tougher to use against these targets. Obviously, we talk about the Pharah in the air is hard to hit with a Meteor Strike, if not impossible. Uh, but the tanks, you're not going to get the instant kills on. And the supports, you know, they can, they can, they can hold their own in some situations. Yeah, and the ta uh, especially with a Sigma power, like, you figure maybe two shots isn't really all that much, but the AoE that they can do is crazy. Uh, they actually can almost, uh, they can kill themselves in a pretty brawly fight if they're not careful. But looking at this cart progress, this is not a good situation for Portugal. Uh, it, you figure, you know, maybe take the fight a little bit sooner, but instead they're given so much free distance here. Yeah, absolutely. And as we look at this, this is all a cause of them taking a fight too soon. That first point, if they had just waited and set up on this high ground, they'd have a lot better positioning. But now it's looking a little bit staggered and kerfuffled a little bit. Yeah, and looking at this Widowmaker play coming out from Diablo, this is utterly bonkers. But that's a bit of a signal ultimate. Ah, oh, so there it is. They do manage to find the kill. Raviance goes down. Fonkto follows. This is, oh, jeez, Diablo. Calm down. The fight was almost lost, but you just had to go and pluck ahead. Yeah, Diablo would really be looking to set their team up for a very good spot. And now it's Sniper versus Ooh. Sniper, Gadara versus Diablo. But <laughs> only going to be throwing their hat into that ring as well. Yeah, interesting. Uh, I honestly thought that was also going to go for Kuwait's way. And yay, verily. Um, Portugal stabilizes. Well played to them. Uh, both teams running a tracer right now. Uh, this is my new favorite game ever. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That tracer going to be there just to get to point a little bit quicker. Um, as we've seen, Pona can absolutely clean up with this tracer, as said by 87 main, or Kuwait uh, main. Oh, jeez. This is nuts. Diablo just finds all these crazy kills, and there's not a lot that Pona can do about it, especially when Widowmaker can take those high ground that they do. But it's a Batiste immortality field on the ground, gets destroyed. Now it's time for Bongos, and it's not, no one's alive left to take advantage of it, so. Yeah, and the kill's just flowing through from Funk. Uh, they saw the triple, the 3k coming through from the side of Pona last game on Anubis. They want to make that happen this time around for themselves. And they're certainly going to do it. They're going to clean up the point. They're going to get the, their name on the kill feed, and it's looking good. I mean, we're not seeing a whole lot of ults in favor, but I think just in terms of fundamental gameplay, we've been shown that Kuwait doesn't necessarily need a lot of ults to make it work for them. Yeah, speaking of not having a lot of ults, neither team is really going to be able to bring anything to bear, but it is a transcendence on the side of the defense, so Portugal is at the very least going to have a little bit of good times uh, in terms of stabilizing here, though Kuwait seems content to just march that cart through, not really putting a lot of pressure on. Yeah, and if you're lonely, looking at the team comp, you want to be saving your transcendence for Kuwait 7 mains. Uh, Graviton Flux, because you know that it's going to be dealing a lot of damage to potentially a huge area. Zen's Transcendence is going to be protecting a lot of that. Tough spot for Gadara. Yeah, and Diablo popping off isn't going to... Oh, jeez, look at these headshots coming out from this dude. This is crazy bonkers. Awesome. I love it. Also, scrapping in there with the kill. It's rare to see a Widowmaker on the cart. But anyways, uh, yeah, that's going to be Kuwait pushing this through quite handily. I have a feeling they're going to finish this with time on the clock. Yeah, it certainly seems to be that way. The only thing they have really to respond now is Lonely trying to use a Transcendence onto the cart, keep everybody up until they can get a collective defense here. Then if some kills come through, maybe, but we're just going to have to see Transcendence coming out just in time for that Graviton Flux. Yeah, that was huge. Well played by Portugal. They are going to stabilize here. Rocks going flying. It's going to be kills for days. Man, they explode. And that's going to be the stabilize. Widowmaker, Diablo, you're probably not going to make it out of here. Rip and Tracer. Yeah, absolutely. As I said, it's that transcendence from Lonely, pretty crucial in ensuring that team fight. And now 
they put the cart in a favorable spot to not get carried all the way to the end because the walk back is so long from the attacking team. It's like a 15 second walk back depending on the hero and they're gonna be trying to make it work for him on the side of Portugal. Yeah, meanwhile, Ponus about to get up and Jiggy with that bomb. The Tracer, oh, there they go with the back line. It's gonna be a stick and boom! Radiance goes down and that pushes over everyone. That's uh, losing your auto like that so quickly into the fight. That's just rough times. Diablo going down, having switched off from the Widowmaker onto the May. Uh, this is the Portugal we know and love, people. Yeah, and the nice thing about that Pulse Bomb coming through from Pona was that it got stuck after Lorp had activated the Valk, and that Pulse Bomb obviously does burst damage, meaning that you're not going to be able to heal through that. So the Valk was basically wasted to just not be able to heal something. That uh, was some very good understanding of the game coming through from Pona. Who's going to be switching on to the May in this next fight? I am a little surprised. Tracer was doing really well for them, and but uh, Tracer Ultimate is going to be interesting if they're going to be able to pull it off, but Q78 main... Kuwait 7 main, rather, is going to have a chance to eat that ultimate, but it looks like Portugal isn't going to need any ultimates in this particular fight, despite a massive anti need coming in, as Lilanada has decided uh, protect and serve means protect and serve some sick pills. Yeah, definitely going to be dropping some bullets. And right now, Kuwait's looking like they're on the questionable path, especially with their ult economy to be finishing this map, because there's only 18 seconds left. Can they do it? Especially with Kuwait main getting staggered out that roughly. So the answer looks like it's going to be uh, with nine seconds left, Kuwait has to touch and that's not a good situation to be in. So yeah, they set up their barriers and the Batiste damage amplification field is in and the kills are flying high. Portugal looking very strong, finds some feet under them in the last match. That's going to be it for Kuwait on this push. Yeah, Kuwait going to be falling as seven main gets cleaned up. It's just going to be the celebration for Rance. Overtime is going to tick down. And that's going to be it, not the full completion coming through from Kuwait. Yep, and I am a little shocked, but as uh, strong as Kuwait was for the entirety of that map, except for the very end, Portugal, again, very strong team. Yes, Kuwait had the jump on them for the first three maps, but it looks like Portugal might finally be getting a little bit in stride with Kuwait's pace, so to speak. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, this is not such a one-sided match where I would say, all right, yeah, Kuwait got held at third point, but, or got held before third point, but that they'll still win it. Like, like you could see it either getting taken that far or being held that far because these teams have been, you know, w with the exception of Anubis, I'd say, pretty, pretty neck and neck. Yeah, uh, arguably the... <laughs> Both teams looking really strong. Uh, Kuwait definitely taking the wins. Undeniable that they are pretty much crushing it right now. But Portugal is still a very strong team. We saw it very early on that control map, taking it all the way to three rounds. So this is kind of the Portugal that we saw early on, but now it looks like they might have a chance to push it through. So that is going to be the question. Can Portugal at least match what Kuwait has just done? That is certainly going to be the goal here. They need to get just under 75 meters past that second point. And they're gonna be rocking, at least it seems like they're gonna be rocking a Widow and a Reaper, the shotguns and the sniper rifle. So kind of a little bit of a dichotomy there, but to no surprise, Kuwait's gonna be running the pharmacy combo with Fonkta and Lorp. Color me surprised. I am utterly shocked that Fonkta is on the far. Oh, <laughs> Pona, Pona ducking away from the Widowmaker to the May. I'm curious if that pick is going to last, given that uh, they have literally no answer to the uh, flying high in the sky Fonkta, who paired with the Pharmacy is going to be a bit more than a, Re a Reaper May is going to be able to handle. Yeah, I gotta say, it does feel like Portugal's playing on an older patch because May Reaper was played primarily with the Ori Hog, and you just don't Ugh. see it that much anymore. But they're still going to be getting just the kills forced onto them as Raviance takes down Pona. Yeah, this is a little interesting. ATF uh, not going to get caught out or staggered. They are going to be able to retreat behind some Orisa shields, but Lelanada is actually going to die having just saved ATF's life. So uh, Kuwait's defense coming out real strong. Pona's still sticking on the May. Not sure if that's going to be the best choice for them. Yeah, Radiant's really close to getting that damage and healing amplification matrix, so going to be keeping an eye on that, especially as that healing can go through so quickly from that Baptiste. And as we look forward, these poles coming through, they're really trying to coordinate them with the accretion rock. Yeah, so this is nuts. Uh, oh, wow. that uh, It's always nice to see the kill pop up while you are reloading. That is just utterly 
bonkers. So Kuwait stabilizing very nicely. You're missing a healer on the side of Portugal, which means this might be over, but a sick rock knocks Fanta right out of the sky. This might be Portugal's chance to maybe climb in. Nope, 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 there's the other healer. Yeah, ATF trying their best to just provide a little bit of shielding with the Orisa. Does not look like it's gonna be enough. The May walls are being so disruptive right now. It just does not seem like Portugal can play around them to some optimal efficiency. Yeah, that's uh, this is kind of interesting now. Uh, Portugal stabilizing on the defense there. You figured maybe they'd try some of those hero picks that did them so well, and now it just looks like Kuwait's running roughshod over them and the ults to match. Yeah, the ults to match indeed. There is a lot in favor of Kuwait. They have almost the full six. They're running with a full deck of ultimates. Funkta, of course, going to be having that rocket barrage. They can probably use that and win a fight if history tells us the truth. Uh, but even if not, they have so many other options to go with here. Yeah, meanwhile, the big six in the hands of Kuwait means that it's pretty much their uh, field day. They're going to get at least a kill out of this. Yeah, one ult means many kills. That's Kuwait showing some sheer control right there. Uh, Ghadar is going to find Fanta on the way out, but I have a feeling that's going to get rezzed. Oh, shocker. Look, there it is. And uh, Pona on the McCree finally, but did the switch come too late? It may have. I mean, maybe they just don't feel like McCree is too optimal of, an, of a pick against Fonkta's Farah. So they may be struggling with what to pick in this situation. Either way, Lonely going to be switching onto the Zenyatta as well, provide, perhaps to provide a little bit more damage for that McCree onto the Farah or whoever may show their unlucky face. And that's the one minute warning. Get your stuff together. And finally, ATF brings out an ult for Portugal. It results in absolutely no kills whatsoever. Instead, Pona is actually the one to suffer as Q87 main finds that murder. A uh, little bit of out of positioning here from Lemonado who gets Maywald off. The barrier is up, but they are going to die very quickly. Thanks to Fonkta in the sky with the uncontested barrage. And yeah, there it is. ATF goes down. 30 seconds left. I don't see Portugal pushing this off without some kind of amazing play. Yeah, Portugal is just going to be in such a tough spot. Kadara almost has that Death Blossom. He's creeping around in the back lines. I'm thinking he might try to go behind and kind of put a little bit of the squeeze on him, but he gets caught out and uses his Death Blossom. What a shame. He almost had the kill into Fangta, but they had their booster rocket ready to rock and roll. And so they escape into the sky. Uh, Ghadara now is actually going to have to switch onto a tracer just to try and get back to the map in time. But Lonely goes down, ATF follows. That's it, everyone. Kuwait takes the final map in a 4-0 against Portugal. Well played from both sides, but honestly, that was a bit of a showing. Yeah, Kuwait just looking, coming here to play. The games kind of got more and more favorable towards Kuwait as we saw them go on you know it looked good on that control point map then we went on to i believe it was um the escort uh -huh. Seven. Uh, route 66 goodness yeah and then from there on it just kind of fell out of favor for the side of the portuguese team however i still think they did have some good moments in there but kuwait eventually going to be walking away with the win yeah, it was a rocking so it was a rocking match from both sides. I really still want to argue that both teams looking very nice on you know just in general their Overwatch was really solid. Kuwait pushing it through though. I think the takeaway here is Kuwait was the team with the ability to actually affect the wins. Portugal's Overwatch again very strong, but not. I guess the, they lacked that final punch. They were able to hold Kuwait every now and again, but it's still you know they they weren't able to get the points themselves. Yeah, yeah, and, you know, a lot of times it's just a, like, I, I talked about this a little bit during Hollywood. It, it felt like Portugal hadn't quite quickly adapted to the new, I, I want to say, character schema, because they were running May and Reaper a little bit. They were, they, it felt like they were really trying to lean on that. However, in the situation, you, you ran that previously to kind of deal with the hog uh, of the Ori-Hog combination, but now we're seeing double shields come out, and that's, not necessarily so applicable. So it, it it seems suboptimal to try to run that May, but in the end, I'm sure that, you know, you can run a May. It just may not have been the most optimal for that team. Yes, especially when you know that Fonkta, you know, I think you actually have to expect Fonkta showing up on that Farah and show up they did, just kill after kill after kill. And as proficient as, for example, Godara was on the Doomfist, 
that that's not a matchup Doomfist can win. You need some kind of hit scan support. And yes, we saw Pona so good on the McCree and the Widowmaker switching on to that hero with only a minute and a half left in the match. That's that that's not the recipe for countering Functa, at least in any way that lets you capture the point. Yeah, very valid point. And it, it may just be a situation where the players for the side of Portugal just were not as comfortable playing with that um, long range hit scan. So like the widows, the ashes that we talked about a little bit before we saw them kind of toy around with Hanzo didn't really seem to quite pan out in their favor as you know, the score of four to zero is going to tell us, but you, you know, it's a question of, do you play what you're comfortable with or do you play what is more effective? So who knows? It's, it's a little bit questionable as to whether that was the proper call. I don't think any of us can say. Yeah, it's 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 rough. Uh, I almost would have liked to see some more tracer action. I, the one clip potential of Portugal on that tracer was just ridiculous. Um, also, because you know we just don't really see a lot of tracer these days. And there were two tracers on the field at one point in time. I I was like literally ecstatic. Um, instead, though, we didn't really see a lot of that, which is fine. Uh, Portugal again, still I, I can't. I got to keep coming back to it. Portugal very strong, but. Even like even from the beginning of Oasis, like after after Portugal took that one point, uh, Kuwait just kind of ran away with it. Yeah, that certainly did seem to be the case. Ku- <laughs> Kuwait looking so dominant. I think that you know this game this game was closer than some of the games we saw earlier today. Um, but I think we're going to be seeing some perhaps positive things coming out of Kuwait. Looking forward to seeing them in the future. We are just waiting a little bit to see if we're going to be having any interviews. But in the meantime, folks want to definitely give you the heads up that if you're in the market for any new merch for any of the teams you're seeing here, definitely got to be checking it out. Check it out. We posted the link in the Twitch chat from Zandy, I believe, as well. You check out the Monkey Bubble Twitter. We got some spicy links in there for you as well. Most or a lot of the revenue does go towards helping the teams in these leagues get to where they need to go. So... With that being said, it looks like we are going to be having some interviews come through with J34. I love it. Some solid tank action coming out from J34. So it'll be interesting to get his opinion on how that particular matchup went. Uh, also, yeah. So as Waltham was saying, we got like the we got the merch, we got the good times. Don't forget to throw us the follow in the Twitch because we are bringing these games almost on the daily. There's gonna be some rocking times tomorrow, and actually, you'll be catching Sir Waltham and myself again if you're so inclined. Meanwhile, we are again just waiting for J34 to be dropping in. So speaking of the tank play, so we saw from this particular matchup i know last time we had we got to see some of that no barriers tank play but this seemed to be like the arisa sigma duo i feel i feel like that's pretty much it yeah and one thing that i i kind of enjoyed seeing was the one of the things that i enjoyed seeing was the coordination with um, halts and the accretion rocks coming out from the Sigma Orisa combos. I think that that's, that's a really clever and well-timed kind of situation, but I just was informed no. that we're going to actually be having Q8. It's this J34. How are you doing uh, guys? <laughs> and doing here they come well. blazing guns, a blazing uh, fireworks abound into the chat. Welcome and congratulations. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. These games were actually really amazing. I had so much fun, and I uh, gotta say, the opponent was so much good. With the <laughs> m- majority of the games were very close, much much closer than anyone thinks. It was very intense games. I had so much fun, and uh, thank you, Portugal, for these amazing games. <laughs> Absolutely, I'm sure that they appreciate getting the opportunity to play against you guys as well. So it seems like coming off this game, you're, you're feeling pretty, pretty good. You're feeling pretty, pretty stellar about yourselves. Yep. The drilling is rushing no bloods from how intense the game was. And uh, yeah, these were amazing games. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, were these games the opportunity to kind of see, because you, you said it was pretty close. You said, you said it was better than, than you might have expected it to be. Um, did these games give you guys kind of an opportunity to see, oh, this is where we might need to improve? And if so, would you care to share what those are with us? Yeah, because uh, we, 
actually practiced a lot of strategies and we thought they would go better, but they went south. That's why we switched a lot and we did not see that coming. Like we practiced a lot of strategies and perfected them in scrims, but in this game actually it went very south. So I, I gotta say kudos to Portugal for countering our strategies very, very well. So that's why I did not expect it to go that way. <laughs> I can definitely agree that the match the match appeared to be pretty evenly sided, though you guys definitely ran away with it, uh, racking up the points and the push throughs. So, given that this meta is the rather this meta, this patch, like what you guys are most comfortable with, yada yada yada. But y'all seem to be pretty proficient running a lot of different heroes. But as a tank player coming into this, what's your thoughts and feelings on how this is shaping out? Uh, I. I'm enjoying this, obviously. I I didn't <laughs> like the four DPS, one tank, one healer meta mm. before, uh, because I didn't like playing Hammond. But now, since then, you know, with the two, two, two lock, I'm enjoying this meta so much more. A lot of people said that it, the the meta is kind of strict; that only you can play double shield and that's it. I don't think so. You, you, as you saw, you can play dive, you can play the Rain Zarya, but you, even though we didn't play that. It was a pretty nice games, I guess. I, I re really love the uh, roll 2 2 2 lock. Yeah, absolutely. I think that uh, the 2 2 2 lock, in some ways, has helped to kind of make. I mean, it, obviously, new mechanics make the game more interesting, but I think that, you know, being made to play a certain way has ironically made the game more diverse. Um, but speaking of that diversity, we noticed you guys were running quite a bit of pharmacy. Would you guys say that that's uh, perhaps like the, the comfort of your DPS players? In, in some ways, yeah, because uh, Fangta, our uh, MVP guy, he yeah. used to play on console and he could reach 5,000 SR with Farah. So let's say that's his, wow. you know, that's his, Jeez. his pretty much his uh, profession. But yeah, you can see him, he played... <laughs> Very, very well with Symmetra as well and everything else. So, but mostly Farah because that's his comfort zone, I, I'd say. Yeah, and and you know we we talk about uh, we'll, we'll talk about the the Sims and that kind of thing. Um, if I remember right, we saw a lot of um, we, we saw I guess a break from that pharmacy combination uh, on Route 66 when you guys uh, I believe it was you guys ran the Bastion a lot on the cart. Um, was that a kind of a map specific uh, play style or was it more so a game uh, mode? Specific? You can say it's map specific because Route 66, you kind of like respawn very close to the payload. So you have the time to set up on payload and push it. And that's well, that's what part where I said they Portugal was already ready for us <laughs> and they held it close. We didn't expect that. That's why you kind of panicked. But uh, <laughs> thank thankfully it went through. But yeah, yeah. that's uh, pretty much map specific, I can say. Oh, good <laughs> stuff. I, yeah, I think I saw a little bit of the chaos breakthrough right at the <laughs> beginning. But overall, yeah. Yeah, seven main. It was a great game to watch. We had a great time watching and casting. At least I know I did. I imagine Threep is along the same mindset. Uh huh. But yeah. uh, Threep, did you have any more questions for seven main? Man, I got nothing other than just, I, I'm very curious how, what is next for Kuwait and for specifically J34? Uh, we really hope um, we improve on a lot of strategies and we have to improve on how to counter strategies like very fast. I mean, we have a lot of strategies, but we, we kind of slow into changing for the counter the strategy like if they mirror we have to go for their counters not just stay as mirror you know what i mean and for me um trying to improve my uh other tanks than orisa uh, orisa winston so i'm trying to play rain as much as possible since i'm enjoying brain zarya so much lately in roll lock mm -hmm. yeah absolutely i can i could definitely relate to that orion's just so fun to just swing into the crowds with but oh, with that, J34, I think we're going to go ahead and let you go here uh, so you can go ahead and decompress, hang out, chill out with your team. Uh, any last words before we uh, send you on your way, my friend? Uh, thank you very much for hosting this tournament. This was so much fun. And I really want to thank everybody who's uh, donating for this uh, cup. 
really appreciate everyone and i really ha i'm really having fun me and i'm in kuwait and are enjoying this tournament thank you very much guys thank you very much have a good one my friend you too bye, -bye.